This is Lecture 3 of the Gretel Boot Camp. We're going to talk about summarizing and plotting data. I think this is one of the most important steps you can do in your data analysis. We're going to talk about calculating the summary statistics for a, da for a data series. We're going to talk about calculating confidence intervals, um, frequency distributions, box plots, and scatter plots. And we're going to get started with summarizing a series. So we have our Gretel main window here, and in here I have loaded the weekly fed funds data that we've been working with. Notice I also have my indicator variable, or it's not an indicator variable, it's actually a discrete variable. At um, A little later in these series of lectures we'll talk about creating indicator variables based on this discrete variable. But this is our discrete variable month, which describes what month the fed funds data came from. And we have our fed funds data, which is just interest rates. So let's go ahead and we're going to take some, uh, we're going to summarize this data by highlighting fed funds. So let's highlight the data that we want to summarize. I'm going to go to variable, and then I'm going to come down here to summary statistics. And I get a nice window with a lot of information on here. Now, the main information I want you to look at and all of this information is very good. It's very interesting, but for the basic level that this particular lecture is aimed for, we're going to look at the mean, which is about 5.1. We'll look at the median, which is another measure of central tendency. It's not used as much in statistics simply because it's a little more difficult to use in the, in the math behind it's a little more difficult in the background but it's actually a very good measure and it's less susceptible to what we call skew. In other words, really, really far outliers um, in the data that could affect the mean much more than they'll affect the median. Uh, so one thing I like to do to look for skew is, well, are the mean and the median fairly close? If they're pretty close to one another, then there's a little less skew than if they're really, really far apart. That's not a formal test at all. It's just a rule of thumb that I look at to um, judge whether or not skewness might be a problem. I have the standard deviation. This is the sample standard deviation. And then we have a few other things. Uh, some of these I'm just going to say don't worry about right now. So CV, skewness, kurtosis, all right, don't worry about those. We have the 5 percentile and the 95th percentile. So this means that 5% um, of all the data points are 0.14 or less. And this means 95% of all the data points are 11.328 or less. Uh, we have the interquartile range, and we have missing observations. Missing observations is a pretty important statistic to look at. In this series, I have none. If you do have missing observations, then you need to figure out, well, what are you going to do with those missing observations? So you might notice from those summary statistics, something's missing. The confidence interval for the mean is missing, right? So we need to figure out an easy way to calculate the confidence interval for the mean. And, well, it's a bit of a trick, and it's a bit of a trick that I will admit a beginning statistics student probably would not think of. But it's, it's pretty straightforward and, and fairly easy to do. So let's go ahead and I'll bring back my Gretel window and my summary statistics. Notice we have the mean, but we don't have the standard error of the mean, and we don't have the confidence intervals for the mean. So let's go ahead and calculate those. To do that, I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to come over here to model, and I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. I'm going to use a regression. So ordinary least squares, so it's the first um, menu item under model. And now I have the ordinary least squares uh, window. And what I want to do is I want to put the variable I'm interested in, in this case fed funds, in as my dependent variable. Don't worry, we'll cover all of this stuff when we talk about regression in a later lecture. And then I want to regress that on a constant, and only a constant. The final thing is I want to unselect if it's selected this robust standard errors. Basically, you won't get to use robust standard errors until a few lectures later. Um, they're very good, but in this case, we don't want them. And click OK. Now, we have some regression output, and there's a lot of this just don't worry about. But notice, this constant, this coefficient on the constant is exactly equal to your mean. 
this is the standard error of this coefficient on the constant. It's the standard error of the mean. Now, it's a little weird way to calculate it, I'll grant you, but it's a trick that works here in Gretel. So next, I want to do the confidence intervals. So the way to do that is I'm going to go to the analysis menu. Now notice the analysis menu is only on this model window. You've got a new set of windows for this model, or a new set of menus for this model. You're not going to find that on the Gretel main window. It's, you have to run the analysis first. And then we're going to go to, after we click on analysis, confidence intervals for coefficients. And there you go. The constant has a coefficient of 5.11776 and a 95% confidence interval between 4.99 and 5.24. Now let's say I don't want a 95% confidence interval. Let's say I want a 90% confidence interval. Well, it's really easy. You just come up here to this little alpha, looks kind of like a fish, click on that. Now this gives you the confidence level, which is 1 minus alpha, and you can choose, say, 90%. We'll click OK. And one thing you might notice, when our confidence goes down, our confidence level goes down, the spread, or how wide this interval, gets a little narrower. Well, that makes sense. We have a smaller, smaller spread to hit, so we're less certain that the truth is inside there. Okay, so we have our 90% confidence level. Let's say I want a, um, oh, I don't know, how about an 83 percent confidence level. I don't know why you would want an 83 percent, but let's just say you do. Just some weird number in here. You can click on other and set this to 0.83 and that will give you an 83 percent confidence level. Now there's nothing special about 83 percent other than it's the weirdest confidence level I could think of right at the time. Okay, so that's how to calculate confidence intervals on the mean within Gretel. Next I want to talk, start talking a little bit about visualizing data. And one of the most important plots to me is a box plot. It just says a lot of information in a very small space. Uh, and if you know how to read them properly, they're really, really very, very useful. So let's talk a little bit more about box plots. So without any further ado, I'll go back to my Gretel main window. Here's my Gretel main window, and I want to do a box plot. So first of all, let's just do a simple box plot of this Fed funds rate. And so I'm going to highlight the Fed funds rate, and then I'm going to go to View. Then I'm going to go Graph Specified Variables, and I'm going to go to Box Plots. All right, and it says, OK, specify the variable. We need to do F-E-D-F, because that's the name of the um, variable we want to plot them in the box plot and then we want to say I'm gonna go ahead and click show interval for median and click OK and here's my box plot now you can see a few things within this box plot now I'm gonna click on this one little icon right down here that makes the box plot bigger and it has basically box and whiskers so this box represents kind of the interquartile range. So what you can kind of think about this is, is how disparate the data is. The wider this box is, the more spread out it is. Now when we look at the whiskers, this shows us you know, more the, the tails of the data. And then up here, they're hard to see in this data, but these will all be asterisks. These are data points that are really a long ways out. Now if I'm looking at this particular plot, I'm going to say, wow, there seems to be, well, some skew. This doesn't look like it's, you know, symmetrically distributed, right? There's a lot of outliers up here at the top, right? And when I look at this line that goes across the middle, that's the median. So that's the measure of central tendency. And then it's kind of hard to see, but there's some dashed lines on either side of that. That's essentially a confidence interval for the median. It's kind of like the mean, but actually it's the, the median that's in there. Okay? And this is how you do a box plot. Now the next thing you can do is a factorized box plot. So maybe we want to see, does the Fed funds rate differ by month? 
Okay, now all the economists in the audience right now are rolling their eyes thinking, oh, this is a silly thing to do. And yes, it is. Basically, I just have some data that I'm wanting to show you how to do factorized box plots with. So um, that's really all I'm doing. Uh, let's go to um, View, Graphs, Factorized Box Plot. Okay, now gives me two variable things to select. First of all, it's the variable to plot. What I want to plot is the Fed funds rate. And then the next thing it asks me is it wants a factor, all right? something to group Fed funds rate based on. I want to group it on months. So I want to put all of the Januarys together, all the Februarys together, all of the Marches together, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to click on this month and tell it that that's the factor. And I'm going to click OK. All right, and this is a little bit, little bit messy. We could go in and we could um, adjust this graph a little bit, but for now, this will work. It has each month on here labeled. They're not quite in month order, mostly because the the Gretel doesn't actually really recognize these strings as month. It just recognizes them as strings. So we could play with that order a little bit. Uh, but essentially what we have is a blocks plot for each month of the data. And when you import that, that series month as strings, it'll automatically use each one of those strings as a label. Now I know this looks a little bit messy, but we could, we could clean this up. Okay, and we have on here the mean, which is this little dot the median, which is the line, the box, the whisker, and then the asterisks for the really, really far outliers. Now you'll notice one thing. With the Fed funds rate, there's no outliers below zero. Why? Well, because the Fed funds rate can't go below zero. It's a nominal interest rate, and there's a zero lower bound on nominal interest rates. Uh, where there's not an upper bound on nominal interest rates and so you'll see all the outliers are up to the top. Well, you can tell that from this data. See that there's everything seems to stop at zero. That's the lowest it goes. But you have lots of outliers to the top. That's one of the interpretations you can get from this data. Finally, you we might want to visualize the relationship between two different variables. And we might want to also visualize the relationship between two different variables given some kind of factor. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do scatter plots um, in the same way that we did box plots. So let me go ahead and bring up my Gretel window. And I've added into, I've opened a new data set. It has the Fed funds rate, only this time it's monthly data, not weekly data. And I have CPI inflation. So this is the year-over-year -year percent change in CPI. And so we're going to see how these two relate to one another. So I, first thing I want to do is I just want to look at uh, scatter plot. So I'm going to go view, multi graphs, uh, specified variables. And I want to go to x, y, scatter. Now I have to, first of all, select my x variable. Uh, my x variable is the variable that goes on the x-axis. Usually it's the one that I think of as being influential on the other variable. Now, I'm not going to get too worried about which one goes where, but I'm going to put Fed funds on the x, and I'm going to put inflation on the y-axis. Now I'm going to click OK, and I have this nice scatter plot. And what this does is for each point in time, this is time series now, each one of these, each both of these series each have a date. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, positioned at the CPI level or the inflation rate on this axis and the Fed funds rate on this axis. And you can see as inflation goes up, the Fed funds rate goes up, which is kind of what we would expect given that over this time period, which happens to be 1990 through the present, for most of it, the Fed has used the Fed funds rate to try to control inflation. So this kind of makes sense. And it's not a perfect relationship. You can see there's some wibbly wobbliness in it. Um, but there we go. 
Next, we might be interested to find out, well, what about, say, um, after 2007? Uh, because we had the financial crisis in 2007. Maybe the Fed changed, and maybe this relationship changed. So let's do that. Um, let's make a factorized scatter plot. But to do that, we need to have some kind of a factor. So what I want to do is I'm going to come here to add. And then what I want to do is I want to add a observational range dummy. And I want a variable that basically is 1 if it's within the range I'm interested in and 0 otherwise. So I'm interested in 2007, so I'm going to type in 2007, colon, and I'm just going to go January. It may not be the right month to start in, but for right now, this is fine. And I need to give that um, variable a name. I'm going to call it, um, let's just call it date. No, no, not date. Um, let's call it sub underscore sample and I'm going to click OK. Now I have this guy right here and what I want to do is I'm going to go view graphs and I want an XY plot with factor separation. And I'm going to click on that one. And I'm again I'm going to make Fed funds my X variable, CPI my Y variable, and I'm going to choose subsample as my factor and I'm going to click OK. Now notice I have now it made the dots two different colors. Alright, so if the subsample is 1 then it's the blue. If the subsample is 0 then it's the red and you get this factorized box plot or I'm sorry, factorized um, scatter plot. This is really good for um, 1 evaluating something called an indicator variable, which is what we created here with this subsample. Haven't gotten to that yet, but we will. Um, or other types of relationships that might be a little more complicated than just a two-dimensional scatter plot. And so that's how to do it.